Now, when we talk about interval estimation, now instead uh, we will set some upper and lower confidence bounds here and with uh, this uh, confidence levels right here we will use them and this one will be our uh, I mean this one will be your upper confidence bound this is one will be your lower confidence bound and you will speak with this much of confidence okay let's try to show this on the board together so so your lower confidence bound will be your average arithmetic mean time uh, minus uh, this much of deviation two standard deviations and your upper confidence bo uh, bound will be x plus two sigma like here usually you have no idea or you don't know real the uh, I mean uh, uh, the uh, standard deviation of the population usually you don't have this you're trying to estimate it right so instead you will use s for this purpose and you can also keep in mind that again another rule of thumb if your sample size is more than 30 it be, it is assumed as it is assumed as normal distribution which lives which makes life easier for us normal distribution which makes life easier for us so for that purpose if we want to speak with 95 percent confidence for example it would fall to minus plus one point sigma this one range and so this would be your and if you want to speak with 90% confidence this will fall around 1.645 uh, sigma where your sigma is this one is uh, over but uh, you can use s instead of this one and that's all right so another version of writing this is with like uh oops i'm sorry one minus alpha percent confidence level confidence level mu confidence interval can be given like this interval can be given like this x minus plus z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of this one and you can use s instead of this one or probability of z larger than z alpha alpha divided by 2 is alpha divided by 2 here we're talking about this part all right so we're talking about this one Okay. this is your x plus minus okay this is how we decide on and this one is your confidence level and okay suppose that you have 95 percent confidence here it means that you have 95 here 0.95 here it means that you will be left with this much and you will be left with this much that's why alpha divided by 2 here these are the remaining probabilities for this one and you look them up from our chart we have this table right for where is it uh, this one right okay let me try to show you uh, this one is for like uh, uh, I mean uh, one point Ninety sixes. See, four point point five. Right? Is that right? Uh, I hope it's uh, 
I mean, this one, what I'm talking about is uh, uh, this one here, point, point, uh, two, 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 two point five, uh, right here, just we uh, discussed right here, right? Uh, this one. Oh, where are you? Okay. Here. Uh, oops. What is this? There, of course, not like this, right? Point, point 0.25, right? Point 0.25. Okay. Anyway. So, uh, the thing is, what we're trying to do is to look them up from the table and for the other one uh, one six and uh, the other one was for 90 percent right here you have for 90 percent confidence you will have point point five on one side and point point five on the other side it means that you will have here what point forty five right for this part you will have uh, 0.45 and when you look it up for 0.45 45 is between these two right these two you see 0.45 it is between between 1.60 and 1.65 and 1.66 or something like this anyway what was the uh, value here 1.645 uh, not this one I'm sorry look at this this one and this one you see this is where your point five is located so it should be between those two values so you can look it up four and one point sixty five namely and just the middle of it is the value between them it should be this one this those values anyway so when you write them up so for 95 percent uh, confidence level uh, your alpha becomes 1.5 and your z because it's divided by 2 right 0.25 will be correspond to 1.96 and for 90% uh, uh, confidence level here this one would be this one and since it's uh, half of it point, point 0.5 and it will be corresponding to uh, 1.645 that's it so let's try to, uh, I mean, solve an example here from our textbook. So, I mean, uh, you're trying to calculate, we return to our example again, your X is uh, 80. 871 kilograms daily production and your s was uh, 21 kilograms right standard deviation so you calculate mu with 90 percent confidence level confidence level it also gives us an idea about the uh, confidence interval as well so your x plus minus one 
six four five sigma over square root of n right so your n is 50 was 50 okay from our example it was 50 and uh, since you don't have this value from population you can use s instead of this one your s is 21 when you put them in their corresponding places minus plus 1.645 times 21 over 50 uh, square root of 50 and it will give you 8 plus 1 minus plus um, 4 point um, 89 so your daily production will fall falls within this range it's uh, 8 6, 6, 1, 1 kilograms and 8 7, 5 kilograms so with 90 percent confidence level it means that 90 percent of repetitive sample uh, intervals will cover this new inside within that range so your when your confidence level increases so it's not surprising that when your confidence level increases also your confidence interval will increase as well because it will have more chance to cover new uh, within the given range that's i think uh, logical to see. all right so um so we we can have different uh, confidence levels for this purpose for 90 percent we have this critical value for 95 percent confidence we have this value and we also have a very very larger one uh, 99 percent confidence we have this interval okay this is the lower bound and the upper confidence bound is given on okay this is the lower confidence bound and this is your upper confidence bound but which one to use we generally use 95 percent this one is very general and uh, corresponding z for 95 percent is usually of course for two-tailed we will see uh, single tails later but for two-tailed it's uh, 1.96 and for practical calculations people take it as two for manual calculations for practical calculations but if you have a calculator you use 1.96 96 and in the exams i i strongly suggest you to take this value as 1.96 because you will be allowed to use calculators in the exam as well and don't use two for this but the idea is what it, what should be your confidence level is dependent on the researcher the researcher decides it but usually usually if otherwise not stated you can take it as 95% confidence okay as a default value if I don't say anything else use this confidence value but I will try to tell you which value we will be using don't worry okay so if those error bounds are placed on a point estimation by a ch by the Chebyshev theorem for example in a point estimate then it becomes an interval estimation it's another uh, approach to the problem and population mean point estimation lays in the middle of interval estimation this is quite common but for some parameters some different parameters not mean point estimation may not fall or will not fall in the middle that's also in our case okay so this is uh, another question um, from the uh, 
I think it was taken from Wikipedia, I guess. Uh, let's try to uh, solve this together now. Okay, this is a machine that automatically fill those cups, which has a capacity of uh, like, uh, I mean, uh, it fills with, uh, let's say, uh, to 250 grams, but with a, uh, an error range of uh, plus minus 2.5 grams. So it is the standard deviation and this one is the average, right? So after affixing, you wonder whether this machine is adequately calibrated or not. So does it function as you say so after the uh, fixing? Suppose that it has been broken, but then you're curious whether it is still working like this or working like as before you're curious about. It. What should you do to understand this? Of course, you take samples, right? Suppose that you take samples now. You take samples. Suppose that you take it from X1 to X25. You fill some mm, cups for this purpose. And your mu is, in fact, this estimator is X1 over N from I1 to N. It's I. And it will, when you calculate it from chapter one, you'll have this information, how to do this. I know that it is a bit boring, but you know how to do it from I equals one to 25 XI. It would be like uh, 250.2 grams. Okay, this was your average. So you take an outer set, it can be 200 and like this one or another set it can be like this but for example you can have many something like this but having uh, 280 grams would be very rare right like uh, having a sample set like this would be very rare anyway find an interval around this value this particular value if whole population mean actually takes a value in this range, is this meaningful? Then you need to, uh, I mean, uh, find the endpoints for this, for standard error. So when you focus on the standard error here, sigma over uh, square root of n would be 2.5 over 25. That should be... 0.5 grams. How can we put this directly? It's beautiful, right? No need to, because we already have the population deviation here, standard deviation here. And now we decide on a confidence level. Suppose that we chose 95% or no one told us anything. We have chosen this value. Please draw. Uh, I mean, don't, uh, I mean, uh, don't rush and please draw. It means that you will have here uh, 95, which is one minus alpha right here. And it means that you will have here alpha, uh, uh, alpha divided by two here in this sense. And he will, you will have Z alpha and minus Z alpha two. Okay. This is the points upper bound and lower bound you're curious about. Okay, that's it. So it means that this one will be uh, like this value would be point, point 0.25 and this one would be also point, point 0.25. That's it. So, however, my table calculates this area. I have a table for this. For this purpose, what should be my endpoint? This Z alpha over two would be minus, okay, your point point twenty five, and it would be this value, this one, the value corresponding to this one, okay. It's uh, 0 0.475, right? Your 0 
four seven five is where you can look it up since you will have your table don't worry where is your table where are our tables ah right here okay here you will have it for point seven five right please don't memorize anything this one it's rather much better find those values it is 1.96 all right 1.96 so so your lower end point is this one is lower end point is x minus 1.6 your your deviation over that and your upper end point right here is x plus 196 sigma over square root of n okay that's lovely so here you have this for the lower bound uh, 0.2 minus 196 2.5 over 5 and for the lower bound it would be this one 1.6 5 it would be something like this and since this one is uh, 0.98 and the range will be the lower bound will be 249.22 and the upper bound will be 251.18 okay okay your 95 percent of the samples will be within this range now the idea or the question you have been asked is uh, is this machine is still adequately calibrated or not so I'm wondering if my 250 falls between that range. Yes, yes. So I can say that this machine is still calibrated. But am I 100% sure about it? No. With 95% confidence, I say that, uh, I mean, uh, this um, uh, machine is still calibrated. It's not like a probability, okay? It's not like we're talking about a probability of being uh, um, like adequately, adequately calibrated within, uh, for still adequately calibrated. It's just we're speaking with a confidence level. I think that's the main distinction between the, uh, the 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 confidence levels and probability we're not we're not talking about probability we're talking with 95 percent confidence this is the confidence interval that we set